Chapter Eight of Lyrical Ballads, seventeen ninety eight, by Samuel Taylor Coleridge and William Wordsworth. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Verity Kendall. Simon Lee, the old huntsman, with an incident in which he was concerned. In the sweet shire of Cardigan, not far from pleasant Ivor Hall, an old man dwells, a little man. I've heard he was once tall. Of years he has upon his back, no doubt, a burthen weighty. He says he is three score and ten, but others say he's eighty. A long blue livery coat has he, that's fair behind and fair before. Yet meet him where you will, you see, at once that he is poor. Full five and twenty years he lived, a running huntsman merry. And though he has but one eye left, his cheek is like a cherry. No man like him the horn could sound, and no man was so full of glee. To say the least, four counties round had heard of Simon Lee. His master's dead, and no one now dwells in the hall of either. Men, dogs, and horses, all are dead. He is the sole survivor. His hunting feats have him bereft of his right eye, as you may see. And then what limbs those feats have left to poor old Simon Lee. He has no son, he has no child. His wife, an aged woman, lives with him near the waterfall upon the village common. And he is lean, and he is sick, his little body's half awry, his ankles they are swollen and thick, his legs are thin and dry. When he was young he little knew of husbandry or tillage, and now he's forced to work the weak, the weakest in the village. He all the country could outrun, could leave both man and horse behind, and often ere the race was done he reeled and was stone blind. And still there's something in the world at which his heart rejoices, for when the chiming hounds are out, he dearly loves their voices. Old Ruth works out of doors with him, and does what Simon cannot do, for she, not over stout of limb, is stouter of the two. And though you with your utmost skill from labour could not wean them, alas, tis very little all which they can do between them. Between their moss-grown hut of clay, not twenty paces from the door, a scrap of land they have, but they are poorest of the poor. This scrap of land he from the heath enclosed when he was stronger, but what avails the land to them which they can till no longer? Few months of life he has in store, as he to you will tell, for still the more he works the more his poor old ankles swell. My gentle reader, I perceive how patiently you've waited, and I'm afraid that you expect some tale will be related. O oh, reader, had you in your mind such stores as silent thought can bring, O oh, gentle reader, you would find a tale in everything. What more I have to say is short, I hope you'll kindly take it. It is no tale, but should you think, perhaps a tale you'll make it. One summer I chanced to see, this old man doing all he could, around the root of an old tree, a stump of rotten wood, the mattock tottered in his hand, so vain was his endeavour, that at the root of the old tree he might have worked for ever. You're overtasked, good Simon Lee, give me your tool, to him I said, and at the word right gladly he received my proffered aid. I struck, and with a single blow, the tangled root I severed, at which the poor old man so long and vainly had endeavoured. The tears into his eyes were brought, and thanks and praises seemed to run, so fast out of his heart, I thought, they never would have done. I've heard of hearts unkind, kind deeds, with coldness still returning. Alas, the gratitude of men has oftener left me mourning. End of Simon Lee, The Old Huntsman Recording by Verity Kendall